Well, I'm Zarin Mehta. I was born in Bombay, India in 1938. And after finishing my school, the thought of going into a profession was very much in the front of our minds, my parents and me. And we thought because I liked math and liked numbers and wasn't scared of them, that maybe accounting would be a good profession to go. And what really clinched the deal was an uncle of mine who was the CA from England said, well, why don't you send him to London? And the, the, the romance of coming to London at an early age uh, just made it absolutely necessary that I did that. I came here in 55. It was a very difficult time for a youngster. Uh, I had to find a place to get articled which meant I had to find a firm that would accept me sight unseen, uh, which we did in the east end of London in Stratford, which nobody had heard of in those days. Now it's famous. And um, I article with really a remarkable man called Howard Davis, who was an extremely gentle, wonderful Welshman, and he really took me as a teenager under his wing with his family and um, really showed me what life was all about. He had a huge influence on me other than teaching me accounting. Well, first of all, I, I stayed there for three years and then, I've, then Howard Davis moved his practice to the city of London. So I had an opportunity of working in London, which was lovely. I qualified in 62. And then I decided that I wasn't really going to make uh, a career in this country, that I should look elsewhere. And I thought of going to the States. The States would have been wonderful, except that they would have drafted me as a GI and sent me back to England. So I went and migrated up to Canada where there was no conscription. Uh, found a job very quickly with Cooper's and Librand and started working there in the end of 62, early 63. And by 1970, I was made a partner. After 1970, I practiced for 10 years. And during those 10 years, I uh, went on the board of the Montreal Symphony. All of us served on boards of civic organizations, non-profit organizations. I was also on the board of a boys club. But the music came very naturally to me because I'd grown up with it, although I was not a musician. And uh, in 73, I joined the board. I got more and more involved in raising money in dealing with the philosophies of what that orchestra should do. And in 1980, I started a, uh, a search for a, an executive director for the orchestra. The search did not pan out because of the fact that anybody who took that job in Montreal not only had to have a knowledge of music and management and so on, but also had to speak French. And there weren't that many experienced people in the province of Quebec. So I took it to see if I could train somebody. I trained myself. And after a three year leave of absence, I made it permanent. And I've just stayed in this profession since then. I think it's not just the training in accountancy. I think it's the training as a partner, as somebody that, as a partner, you're an entrepreneur. You have to meet people. You've got to develop business and you've got to take chances. Uh, I don't mean that in, in a funny way. You have to take chances in what you're going to do in life. And in a performing arts group, you have to do the same thing. And you have to know people, you have to raise money, you have to know whether something that you want to do is going to be successful in terms of marketing, in terms of selling tickets. And I guess it's, you have to sell yourself. To suddenly be called by the Institute to say, I'm getting a Lifetime Achievement Award for something that I think is you know, basically a small company that I'm running. $70 million is the budget in terms of all the people who are going to be sitting there tomorrow looking at me. This is a, you know, not even a small branch. And yet it's world renowned. It has an important impact on cultural life in certainly in New York and in the United States. I feel that uh, the fact that 
I'm getting this because of whatever I've done to put the New York Philharmonic more on the map and more uh, involved in the musical world. I, I just don't know why the Institute even thought about me. Election years are usually good for ticket sales. You know, it's like hemlines. The stock market goes the way the hemlines do or the other way around, I don't know. But election years have always been good for the performing arts. In terms of business, uh, I don't think the election per se is going to have an impact. I think the fact that um, what's going on in Europe is so much worse than what we've gone through in, in America. America can only benefit to it. I hope that they keep going and building on what they've done the last couple of years. And I'm not going to play politics now and say who I vote for, but most of the people in my profession go one way. I'll let you dream of what that is.